On behalf of our society and LSE Asia Research Center, I would like to welcome you all to the LSE China Development Forum 2014. Um, and it has a certain rhythm to it after a while. But then you have to wonder how successful is it? And I think that within China, the China dream, as we saw yesterday, is very successful. It speaks to a lot of people. But it was very striking to me, you know, thinking back to my nine years in Beijing, you know, for example, when we bought a car in Beijing, I had to take a suitcase full of 100 yuan renminbi notes across Beijing in a taxi cab uh, in order to buy my automobile. Uh, internet, of course, very slow in China, you know, probably because of various controls. You know, common to be watching BBC or CNN, and then certain words are mentioned, and then bam, all of a sudden the TV goes black. Uh, <laughs> We all know very limited number of movies that you can watch. I only went to the movies once or twice in nine years in Beijing. And my Chinese is mama hu hu, so it's not just, it's not just a language issue. And the Chinese Communist Party, the 18th Three Kingdoms Conference, was set up. It was a mistake to change the China to a free society. The problem was that there was a question in which to make the market 在资源配置当中起决定作用，这为中国企业的国际化指明了方向，为整个中国企业的国际化通过市场配置资源明确了整体方向。过去三十年是中国为世界制造，未来将出现世界为中国制造的格局。呃，但是波西兰案我们期待了非常长的时间，但是我最后不得不用一个。一个英国诗人的说法，就是在虚幻的花园里边，我们发现有几只真实的癞蛤蟆。政府应该千方百计的对保障律师的这样的一种独立性，包括像许许志勇氏案件啊、刘晓波案件啊，呃，政府不要去控制律师。Are China's interest rates too low? They're the highest of any major economy. By far. Now, people then say, well, it's fallen a lot. But it's fallen a lot everywhere. People say it's negative in real terms, but it's negative everywhere. And there I think there's still progress that China has made, but still some way to go. Second heading, education. And here I think the big um, success story is Confucius Institutes. Over 300 of them uh, in the world, one in here in LSE. Uh, and I think they have done a lot to bring Chinese culture, Chinese language to a new order. But as China gets closer and closer to the frontier, the, the rate at which it can catch up is inevitably slower, right? Resulted in a um, a sort of a credit bubble in the system. So what happened is shadow banking boomed um, as a result. So trust products, a lot of trust products were issued around 2010, 2011. Usually they're about three years duration. So this year, next year, we're going to see lots of them coming to expiration. And whether they can be repaid or not, that's very problematic. And I think that risk is on the downside. Okay, talking about uh, foreign media, I mean, that's the thing, uh, especially, especially for me, we concern a lot. It's about access to China in terms of uh, reporting and coverage. And unfortunately, I think uh, we are also facing increased uh, difficulties. Now, China has no completely independent media. So we can say that we have not seen it yet. I was recently asked by a foreign organization, did I think it would be good to help China with the petitioning system to make it a better system? My reaction was, it would be far better to fix the underlying problems than to fix the petitioning system, which, by the way, I'm not sure there's so much that foreign organizations can do to help a very peculiarly Chinese mechanism. But if, for example, you thought that 50% of the petitioning cases were about land takings, you could probably fix petitioning by fixing the land system. I mean, you just need to go back 10 years ago. Uh, the activity within Asia was you know, relatively benign. Uh, it was limited to a very few clients who did cross-border deals. And if you take a view on China, 
it was non-existent. In fact, there were more ECM or equity capital markets and debt capital markets activity rather than M&A. Uh, so I wouldn't have had a job uh, a few years ago. But I think things have changed and things are changing very, very quickly. Uh, and I think that's, that's, that's really uh, what the focus is now. 中国历史上、政治上的这个滥权，主要是一种道德滥权。Corruption of power and money has threatened the Chinese soul, and I have seen and worried deeply about its footprint. The need to develop accountability, reliable legal structures, and modesty are recognized, but our Western ways are the result of our histories, and China is challenged to find its way to a modern and moral state. But China will do it their way. Remember that phrase, if nothing else. China will do it their way. But I've always thought that it was economic growth that brings these comforts to emerging economies, not the other way around. Not making life comfortable and then through competition in services, for instance, and then thinking that that will propel economic growth. In China, the objectives may be very different because the government expect media to not only to report on what's going on, but also to be informative about government policies and to be conducive to stability and to be supportive of the leadership at various levels of government. I promise you, in my business, I use a lot Chairman Mao, and I use a lot Confucius. Confucius. Like all China watchers, I have studied both the words and actions of the government since the recent party plenum, and I'm very struck by the growing confidence with which Chinese policymakers recognize the need to rebalance the economy and the levers that they have at their disposal to do so. Chairman 所以它是影响前局 uh, I just hope that you've had inspiring moments during today's program and we've come to the end of this forum but we sincerely hope that the rebalancing will not end here. <laughs>